Are you thinking about moving to the Seattle area and you're wondering what the true cost of living is over here? In this video, I'm gonna dive deep into the cost of living of the Seattle area. As always, I'm Bryce Greenleaf, local real estate broker here in the greater Seattle area. I love helping you guys out. Those of you that reach out to me here from YouTube when you're looking to make a move over here or you live over here and are just looking to buy a home. If that sounds like you and you're looking to find the right place to move to and find that right home to purchase, feel free to reach out to me I would be more than happy to help. But like I said, on this video, I'm gonna talk specifically about what the cost of living is in the Seattle area. Now, when you're doing your research and you're trying to figure out where you might wanna to move to if you're moving out of state, this is, of course, one of the first questions that you're gonna to try to find answers to. This is one of the most important things to consider when you're moving to a specific area so you can make sure that you can afford to live there. Now, what a lot of people do when they're really researching moving to the Seattle area, they're only comparing it to a few other locations. Sometimes they're comparing it to the Portland area. Uh, very often they're comparing it to somewhere in California, whether that's the Bay or LA or San Diego. Very often they're comparing it to somewhere on the East Coast as well. Maybe that's New York. Maybe that's Boston. Uh, maybe it's somewhere else on the East Coast. So when we look at that comparison sake, the cost of living here is within that range and is a lot cheaper than some of these areas. And when I'm talking about the cost of living here in the Seattle area, I'm not just talking about Seattle proper, I'm talking about the entire metropolitan area as a whole. All right, so category number one, this is going to be taxes. So maybe you're doing your research because you heard Washington has no state income tax. That is true, we do not, we're one of the few states left that do not have state income tax. So I've heard from a lot of my clients that have found me here on YouTube and moved up here, a lot of them have moved up from California and a big deciding factor for that was the lack of state income taxes compared to 10 to 13% they were paying in California. So it's a huge bump in their income. You can see on my screen here, there's a recent study done by Wallet Hub where it goes over the tax burden by each state. So we're not just looking at one specific metric, just income tax, just property tax, just sales tax. It's combining everything and coming up with an overall tax burden of each state. So you can see the map here, the darker the color, the, the higher the tax burden is in that specific state. So you can see this Washington here is right about in the middle. It's ranked actually number 29. Um, so more than half of the states in the US are gonna be more expensive when it comes to taxes than Washington state. You can see California here is ranked number five. You've got New York is probably one. Yep, New York is number one, uh, but they have Washington at 29. Let's look at those specific numbers. So in New, New York, Number one, your total tax burden is about 12%. In California, it's about 10.4%. Now you can see they're taking into account property taxes, income taxes, and sales and excise taxes. As we scroll down here and get to Washington, you can see we're at 8.04%. So about a little over 2% lower than California, about 4% lower than uh, New York. You can see the 0% here for income taxes, property tax burden, you can see 2.58% here, and then um, the overall sales tax and excise tax burden about 5.46%. Another study recently done uh, by Visual Capitalist here, it gives a, another great visual here that we can kind of look at that backs up the Wallet Hub study as well. These are just the tax burden by state. So again, New York at 12 California at 10.4. You've got Washington up here at eight. It's actually even lower than our neighbor to the South Oregon uh, at 8.4. Uh, Massachusetts, it's lower than Massachusetts at, at 8.6, which is another area that I see some people are considering, especially if they're looking to live in a, really live in the city, uh, maybe have a tech job and they're saying, oh, should I move to Boston? Should I move to Seattle? Um, that's, that's another comparison as well. So when you talk about these tech hubs and where all these high paying jobs are, Seattle is actually one of the lowest when it comes to that overall tax burden, and that's primarily because of that lack of state income tax. Now, people will often ask me when they're moving over here, what, what is the property tax like? But what's the percentage of property tax in the Washington, specifically in the Seattle area? It's gonna vary quite a bit. There's no just one standard. Uh, your property tax is 2% or anything like that. It's based on uh, your specific area, what city you're in, different levies. There's a few things that go and factor into that. But for the most part, your tax rate is gonna be anywhere from three quarters of a percent uh, to just over 1%. So people will come 
come from somewhere like Texas and their property tax was two and a half or three percent, which is what I've been told. And they come here and they're actually kind of surprised that our property taxes are a bit lower. You know, on a lot of the homes that we sell at a million dollar price point home, those taxes are often seven to nine thousand dollars a year. Again, that's going to depend what specific city you're in, if you're in Seattle proper, one of the suburbs, what county you're in. Um, but uh, that's it. that gives you a general idea of what those property taxes are going to look like. Number two here, let's talk about the home prices. So in the Seattle metropolitan area as a whole, median home prices are about $795,000. That's for residential uh, true single family homes. In Seattle proper, that number is about $958,000. If we look at condominiums, the median home price for condos in the Seattle metropolitan area is 540,000. So yes, of course, our home prices are gonna be more expensive here than 90, 95% of the rest of the country because we have so many of these high paying jobs. Microsoft headquarters, Amazon headquarters, we've got Google, GoDaddy, Facebook, Apple, TikTok, they're all over here. They all have offices, jobs over here. There's a lot of high paying finance and medical uh, jobs. So all of that's over here. There's a lot of money. So yes, it is going to be more expensive. You've got suburbs all over the map though. There's in the Seattle metropolitan area, that's really considered three counties, King, Snohomish, and Pierce counties. There's over 70 different suburbs in those counties, suburbs, cities, towns of Seattle. You can go on the very extreme end where the median home price in Bellevue is about 1.8 million right now, or you can go on the much lower end in Tacoma where the median home price is closer to 500,000. And then there's everything in between. All right, so let's talk about the grocery prices over here. So you can see a recent study here through Help Advisor. It's by the US Census and Household Pulse Survey where it goes into the average US grocery costs and how certain states compare uh, to the U.S. average. So in key findings here, you can see the U.S. average is about $270 per week, a uh, little under $1,100 a month on groceries. Again, just the U.S. average. The four highest states in the U.S. are California, Nevada, Mississippi, and Washington is number four. So U.S. average is 270. Here in Washington, we're at about 287. You can see on the low end, they're they hovering around 221, 227 in there for Iowa and Wisconsin. Now, as we know, with inflation, it's made everything more expensive. And yes, grocery prices over here are, are going to be, as this shows, it's going to be more expensive than the national average. We also have a lot of natural grocery stores around here. I know those are becoming more commonplace pretty much everywhere, but we've got a lot of Whole Foods and Trader Joe's and PCC markets, all that kind of stuff that can raise those average grocery costs. All right, next category is transportation costs. So when you're living in the Seattle metropolitan area, you are car dependent. If you're living in Seattle proper, you can get away without having a car. Maybe if you're living in downtown Bellevue, you can get away without having a car, but pretty much anywhere else you live in Seattle, you're very likely going to need a car. Maybe Redmond and Kirkland, you can get away with it. But for the most part, you're gonna need a car. So let's look at those gas prices and how it compares to the nation. So this is their AAA, um, you know, national uh, gas prices sorted out by each state. So you can see over here, we are the most expensive uh, generally in the US. Uh, Washington's at $4.53. Oregon to our south is at 427. California is, I'm sure, going to be the worst at just over five dollars. Nevada 426. Arizona uh, 380. And then um, as you get down, you know, in Texas is just over three dollars. So. You know, of course, we, it, this is how it always is. When, you, when you're over here, whether it's California, Oregon, or Washington, your gas prices are going to be higher than the national average. Now, if you are living in, say, Seattle proper, and you're gonna be focused on public transportation, there are a few different options. We have our light rail system, which currently is going, um, the furthest north stop is just gonna open up later this year. It's gonna go from all the way up north to Linwood, and then all the way down south past the airport. And then it's gonna go over to Bellevue. Those stops should be opening soon as well. It's gonna go over, to, uh, over the lake to Bellevue and Redmond. So this is, 
you know, a, a good system to take advantage of so you don't have to deal with parking downtown. You don't have to deal with that rush hour traffic sitting on the freeway going 10 miles an hour. Uh, so a lot of people take advantage of this. We'll use it when we go down to a sporting event downtown or something so I don't have to worry about parking. When you're using the light rail, it's going to be anywhere from $2.25 to $3 each way, depending what, what route you're taking. Um, now, I, I will say with this, uh, in my experience of all the times I've been on there, they do not enforce toll fees. Um, it's great to pay, but you'll see a lot of people that are walking on for free because uh, they don't actually monitor this. Now, the downside to that is we have a homelessness crisis over here. We have people that take advantage of this stuff and they're using drugs in public and all this kind of stuff. So there's a lot of people that will just be walking on the train um, and might use it to take a nap and for, for some shelter for a little bit. So just keep that in mind. Um, but, um, but it is, if you're gonna pay, like you probably should pay, it's about $2.25 on the low end to about $3 each way. Outside of the light rail, if you're right downtown in Seattle, maybe you're working and living in South Lake Union, you've got streetcars. So streetcars can take you to and from right down there in Seattle proper. It's about $2.25 or $2 each way. We have Metro buses, the Seattle Metro uh, here in the area in King County. That's about $2.75 per ride. And that rounds out most of the public transportation around here. You have sounder trains, you have uh, ferries and water taxis. Most people aren't going to be taking those as much, um, but those are kind of the main sources of public transportation around here. All right, and the last category here is the utility costs. So let's look at this study by the uh, the U.S. Bureau of Labor and Statistics. Um, so en average energy prices, Seattle, Tacoma, Bellevue. This is the Seattle metropolitan area. So the first chart is the gas prices like we've already talked about. This confirms what we talked about in that previous graph uh, of the U.S. that Seattle is higher than the average U.S. home, uh, home prices of uh, uh, gas prices. As we go down here to the second chart, this is the electric prices here from 2020 to 2024. You can see the U.S. versus Seattle here. Seattle has been consistently lower than the U.S. average when it comes to electric prices. As we go down to the third chart, we're talking about gas prices. This has varied. It's gone up and down a little bit. At times, we're a little bit higher than the U.S. Uh, average. At times, we're pretty much even. And at times, like right now, we're just a hair lower. So just probably expect the gas prices here in the Seattle area are going to be pretty at par with what the U.S. average is. All right, well, this rounds it out. Some of the most common categories people are looking at that you might want to be aware of when you're trying to figure out the cost of living in the Seattle area. In summary, yes, it's more expensive to live here than most of the U.S. Also, in summary, it can be a lot cheaper to live here than California, which is where I see a lot of my clients relocating from. Um, even the East Coast, I see a lot of people coming from over there as well, because out of all of these tech-centered hubs that have really high-paying jobs, Seattle's actually probably one of the most affordable. Home prices are more affordable than the Bay Area. Taxes are much more favorable than all of California, New York, and a lot of the other East Coast areas. So it provides a great place for people to land to be able to take advantage of that higher paying job and have a great place to live with that cost of living being semi-doable and better than where they came from previously. As I said, I'm an active broker here in the greater Seattle area. So if you're moving over here, looking to buy a home and you need to figure out where that right place for you to live is, feel free to reach out to me. I'd be more than happy to guide you through that, sit down and chat with you about what you're looking to find and see how I might be able to help. Thanks for watching this one.